Recently, I passed 1,000 subscribers, and that apparently is the benchmark to suddenly becoming relevant in my own house. As my oldest daughter binge watched a load of my YouTube videos, when previously I was too cringe for her to watch them. Being a 43 year old fitness YouTuber, I'm, I'm not a fitness YouTuber by the way, is not cool apparently. I'm not sure what the best first hurdle is, hitting 1000 subs or being slightly less cringe to my two teenage daughters. My missus still hasn't watched any of my vids, maybe she's waiting until I hit 10,000 subs. Anyway, my daughter gave me some constructive advice and feedback on the back of the video she watched. The first one was Speak Less, probably because she's a huge Hamilton fan. Talk less. What? And then the other piece of advice was that I need to share more about myself in my videos. Apparently they're very one dimensional, according to her. If I'm honest, speaking less probably isn't gonna happen, but I can do the second piece of advice, I think. So in this video, I'm gonna to attempt to share more about myself and what I'm doing. My aim in this video is to share what I do, that's it. I've already started doing that in my last video. This video is about the value of overcoming a bloody hard challenge. I'm not an expert or a doctor. It's probably good advice to say that you should not copy anyone on YouTube, especially a bloke who used to eat three takeaways a week and washed it down with a gallon of beer. I do not know what I'm doing half the time, but doing something is better than nothing. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. So my daughter said that I need to offer my viewers, you, some background info on me. It's okay to share my fitness journey, the runs and the marathons and the ultras and everything, but I also need to share the why and the how. And I actually thought this was not bad advice from her. Watching a heavy bloke slowly walk through a field at three o'clock in the morning. Oh my God. This is bullshit. Isn't great viewing without context. Add in that this bloke used to be significantly heavier and he is now trying to run his first 100k ultra in a heat wave, it suddenly becomes a lot more interesting. Uh, uh. Two weeks ago, I finished a race that had a four month build up to it. Now that it's finished, I can move away from just run training into a more balanced, holistic approach to my fitness and continued weight loss. I can take on new challenges. I'd like to return to my sub 30 minute park run target. I set myself back in January of this year. It means that I want to run a 5K park run in under half an hour. I haven't run a park run since April this year due to work commitments. So finding the time on a Saturday morning is my biggest barrier to that at the moment, not necessarily the training. I'd also like to win my first Cat D bike race on Zwift and I'm getting a lot closer every time I race. Two days ago, I attempted the stage three of Zwift's Get Rolling series. So sit rep, I'm about 10 days after running a 100K ultra marathon last weekend. Oh my God. I'm racing this evening, it's Friday night. Um, looks good, it's the London Classic and I remember it being particularly tough because of a 6% heel where I got dropped. However, I have one good thing that's happened to me and I'm hoping it's gonna be a good thing and it doesn't backfire on me, but I've just dropped my weight. So I've just dropped my weight from 111 kg to 106.9. Um, so it's 107 really, but the 0.9 makes a difference. So I went and got myself weighed this morning. And since the ultra 10 days ago, I've lost 12 pounds. Um, so yeah, it's made a huge difference. I know. Maddie's with me for this. She's sitting here off screen. So she's my oldest and she's gonna watch me race. She's never watched me race before. Scarlett's watched a few. So she's promised to cheer me on and press my power-ups. All right, this is where it all goes wrong, Mad. This well, hill. Well, I'm not in the of what's coming, so I'm I'm currently in a calorie deficit period, post ultra race. And I miscalculated how many calories I needed for this race. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. my heart rate. Yeah. And then I attempted it again yesterday, 
having eaten a lot more calories and I ended the race in the lead pack finishing in fourth place. So this is my second attempt at the stage three get rolling. I did it two days ago at, no, did I do it two days ago or was it yesterday? I've got Scarly with me. Yesterday. It was yesterday. So I've been on a calorie deficit diet for the past two weeks. It's working because I'm losing, you know, I'm losing excess weight that I can afford to lose. However, it doesn't put me in a great place when it comes to bursts of energy and uh, in loads of endurance. So today I've had about a six, 700 calorie breakfast. So I should be uh, in a really good place. I've also had my supplements. I had my uh, greens drink um, with spirulina in it as well, which is great for hydration and energy levels. Um, I've also had some creatine as well, which I've been advised is really good for bursts of energy. When I finish this race, I'm, I'm gonna be going to the gym um, and I've got myself a weight and strengthening session in the gym. Three seconds out. Okay, go. So this hill that's coming up now, the one that veers off to the right, is a tough one. I've now ridden this course four times, I think, three or four times, and I've been dropped on it every single time. Here we go. Right, press the feather. We made it. Didn't get dropped. Okay, as we go around this corner, there's another hill. Okay, this isn't the hill. This is the hill. Didn't get dropped. and I ended the race in the lead pack, finishing in fourth place, just outside that elusive podium place. So back to the video. I'd like to set myself a decent half marathon PB pace. I have a new half marathon race coming in two weeks. So that should be fun to focus solely on pace rather than endurance, nutrition, and hydration. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to just running. And I'd also like to run another marathon distance, smashing my London marathon time. I'm very proud of my London marathon achievement as it was the first time I'd ever set myself a target in the world of running. And to be fair, my London marathon time was really not that great. I'd like to get my new marathon PB so I can see where my actual current marathon ability is. If you want to watch those videos, I've set them up as a playlist called My First Marathon. Um, watch them from the beginning, all my training runs and build up to the marathon. They're they're really good, even if I say so myself. Because I don't actually know what I'm doing, I do know that I need to structure what I do. But before I can have a structure, I need to have a target. I need to have a focus. You see, you have to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you ever going to have a dream come true? You've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, then how are you going to have a dream come true? <laughs> I have some events coming up in the next weeks and months. However, they're nowhere near as strenuous or as demanding as the ultra I completed two weeks ago. So it now frees me up to focus a lot more on losing weight and getting stronger and fitter. As I've mentioned already, I'm now in a 10 week calorie deficit diet, something I would never consider doing prior to a long running event. I'm eating three consistent meals a day, but the combined calorific value of those meals will not exceed 1,500 calories total. Then at the end of the day, when I factor in the calories burned on that day's exercise and the calories a 43-year-old 106 kilogram bloke burns, just staying alive, 
then I should end on a number that is above 1,500 calories, i.e. I've burnt more than I've eaten. There's a lot more going on than just calories in versus calories out, but in simple terms, this tactic has worked for me well in the past, and I know it will help me get down to what it is I want to weigh now, as it forces the body to burn excess body fat rather than copious amounts of calories and carbs uh, in the meals I've just eaten. And when I have a bigger or more strenuous run, race or gym session, I increase my calories back up to 2000 calories just for that day so I don't pass out mid-event. This then gets me onto the obvious question of what weight do I want to get down to? And the answer to this is I don't actually know. I'm now in uncharted territory. The last time I weighed 106 kilograms was back in the 90s as a teenager. When I decided to lose weight and start on this new journey back in 2018, weighing about 190 kilograms as a 38 year old bloke, I didn't have a target weight. I just knew that any weight loss, no matter how small, was a good thing. I was asked constantly what number I wanted to get down to by my friends and family. And I always said 16 stone as this sounded reasonable. I've now reached that number. So the new number I'm looking to get down to is whatever number I feel comfortable with. Whatever number allows me to run the Thames Path Challenge next year in 16 hours. Whatever number allows me to continue to do the activities and events that I enjoy in my new found fitness freedom. There's no point fixating on a weight number if it still leaves me feeling heavy or unhappy looking in the mirror. One thing I never used to do back in 2018 and 2019 when I initially started to lose weight was combine my new healthier lifestyle with weights and strength training. So I also need to hit the gym. I need to hit the gym like I've never hit the gym before. Losing over 85 kilograms of weight has left me needing to tone up and build some definition in some areas. I'm very happy with my progress so far and I'm thrilled to have documented my journey over the past four years on my YouTube channel. But now I feel like I have entered into a new phase and that's to move my own personal ability forward, which can't just be based on weight loss alone as it has been so far. I used to run to lose weight. Now I want to lose weight and strength train so I can run more. I fell in love with running when I progressed from walking to running back in October of 2020, when I completed the 30 to 30 challenge, where I would run for 30 minutes every day for 30 days. challenge wasn't to run far or fast as I couldn't, I was too heavy. The challenge was to simply just keep running as best I could for 30 minutes every day. I then signed up for the London Marathon and very slowly accomplished something that I never thought was possible. I ran the London Marathon a year later, a childhood dream of mine. Can't miss, I smile my girl's hand. I blow my kiss. I then had a slump small slump after the London Marathon. I didn't put any weight back on as my eating habits had changed for long enough that they were now part of my daily routine. They'd become muscle memory. But I didn't do a lot of exercise and I plateaued. Then COVID and lockdown made it even easier to use that as an excuse to avoid exercise. But eventually I forced myself back out and I kept running. I realized how much of a difference running made to me and my life. So I kept doing it with no real target other than just to run, run for fun. Then I discovered park runs. Mad. Loved running these. And I set myself a new target to run a park run in sub 30 minutes. That's not particularly fast pace, but it was just too far out of my reach that I knew I had to come away from park runs run slower for longer to get faster, lose more weight, and then I could revisit, revisit it with a bang. I then bought a Watt Bike Smart Bike, which was the best investment I've ever made into my fitness. It was worth every penny. This helped me build strength in my legs, it helped me increase my endurance, and it definitely helped me lose more additional excess fat. One of the best things I've ever bought, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't look back on it now. Then I signed up for the Thames Path Challenge, set myself a ridiculously hard target of 16 hours. That was so unrealistic, it was laughable. And I've come to learn that without structure, I revert to just running. So I need to have a focused approach to my training. I have signed up again for the Thames Path Ultra in September next year. So I have exactly a year to focus on my training for this. And now with a more realistic target of 16 hours, 
it's more realistic because I have a year to train for it and I will hit 16 hours. As I've mentioned before, I'm now on a calorie deficit period for the next 10 weeks. I'm attempting to drop weight as I make this video. I currently weigh 105 kilograms. I wanna do this until I get down to about 100 kilograms. I've already lost 12 pounds since the ultra and still going. And before anyone comments that this is a lot and sounds unhealthy, if I weighed 70 kilograms and lost 12 pounds two weeks after running 100K, then yes, I'd agree. But still weighing 105 kg is still carrying a lot of excess body fat outside the expected range for my age and height, which isn't a bad thing to go on a calorie deficit diet. I do not recommend anyone running 100K as a diet choice though. It's harder than the Atkins. Uh, I also know that strength training builds muscle, which won't help with weight loss, particularly as a sole target, but it's not my sole target. Weight loss combined with strength training will help me hit my running and Zwifting targets. The only downside to calorie deficit diet, dieting, other than being consistently hungry, is that I can't really do a lot of high intensity training in the gym on Zwift or go out and do long endurance runs. So whilst I'm doing this, all the training I'll be doing will be lighter than normal. And then on days I know I'll be increasing the intensity, I'll increase my calorific intake, if that makes sense. So having said that, here goes. Day one starts on Sunday. It's the beginning of the week. When you have a partner like I do, you do not get to sleep in. She's up crashing and banging early doors. So even if I did want to sleep in, I couldn't, which is good for me. It means I don't need an alarm clock. First on the agenda is breakfast. I start with a 200 calorie bowl of cereal, bran flakes and sultanas. Now I do weigh these, it seems extreme, it is extreme. Just a bowl of cereal, you don't need to weigh that. But I am notorious for creating huge bowls of cereal and not even realizing it. And if left unchecked, this normal portion will quickly grow into a mixing bowl size, calorie bursting portion. So I weigh it. But Sundays are one of two heavier energy burning days. So I also add in two slices of brown toast and peanut butter. I then work in the office on my next video or on the family business until about 9 a.m. when it's Zwift time. I like to do a 30 minute warm up as well. Race and warm up totals about 60 to 75 minutes of high intensity workout. And I love Zwift for this. <sighs> I haven't really spoken about my supplements before. I did do a video about what I take running with me and I mentioned them in this, but I take a varied range of supplements, including my greens drink. I've been using it for a couple of months. Uh, it's been great for my hydration, something I'm still not great at, which is hydration. Since I started drinking this stuff, I haven't had a cold or felt run down, which I was regularly plagued with in the early days of my training. And then I've also been sent two new items from Love Life Supplements to try out. And I've been reliably informed by Richard at Love Life that I would benefit from using essential amino acids. And then I finish on Zwift, you know, 60 minutes later, and then I drive to the gym. So I'm on my way to the gym now. I had a larger breakfast, more calories. Um, I'm trying out a new thing, which is creatine tablets. The only downside to the gym that I'm going to is it's got a maximum of two hours stay on the car park, which I didn't know until after I joined it. In the gym, I have exactly one hour and 59 minutes as annoyingly the car park is on a time limit. I have a high intensity two hour workout where I focus on low weight, high reps workout. I actually got this tip from a Sally McRae video. I start with simple calf and Achilles stretches. These help with increasing my lower leg flexibility and complements my running. It also strengthens a slight calf tweak I picked up on the Ultra. I then move on to the chest and shoulders machine. I do 10 times five reps on 14 kilograms or 50 reps in total. This helps warm me up. I do 10 times five weight bar squats on 40 kilograms. So low weight, high reps helps with my flexibility as well as my strength. Since I started doing this about a month ago, it's massively helped me get lower in my squats as well. Then I do 10 times five free weights uh, above my head on 12 kilograms, general strength training. I do 10 times five free weight pulls on 20 kilograms. I can feel this work in my stomach muscles as well as my arms and my shoulders. I do 15 lunges per leg broken up into three times five reps with 12 kilogram kettlebells. 
Now my balance isn't great and you can see me getting annoyed with myself on this exercise. My poor balance and ankle strength is stopping me from achieving clean or even low lunges. I've included these to improve not only my leg strength, but also improve my ankle strength and my balance. I then do the back tricep machine. So I do 10 times five reps on 32 kilograms. And to end the session, mainly due to running out of time on the car park, I hit the abdominal, the abdominal on a sliding scale, starting with 10 quick reps on 18 kilograms, 10 times three reps on 23 kilograms, and I end on 10 quick reps on 27 kilograms. When I started using this machine a month ago, my stomach muscles were screaming and I couldn't get past 20 reps on 18 kg. Now I'm up to 27 kg as my last set and still improving. So that's it, uh, gym session done. So that was two hours in the gym to the minute. And then on Monday is a long, slow endurance run. I run at least 20K. Sometimes I push it to 25K. I'm out on my Monday run, 20K today. I'm on the country roads around my house. I'm about 5K in. And I've actually just run that first 5K uphill as well on my park run pb okay that's the halfway point turning around now heading back the good news is it's downhill again i ensure that i have the calories that allows me to do this tuesday is a gym session where i complete the same as sunday and then i go to work from 3 p.m to late on a tuesday wednesdays is a zwift day to give the joints a break a simple race that will last 30 to 45 minutes. Wednesdays are also the day where I complete the editing for that week's video, which takes up the whole day. I use this day as a recovery day. I spend a large portion of the day sat at my desk editing the weekly video and working on the family business. And again, I'm at work from 3 p.m. to late as well. Then Thursday is at least a six mile run that I'll sometimes push to a 10 mile run, depending on how I feel, followed by a gym strength session Again, focused on strength training, low, low weight, high reps. And then again, I'm at work from 3 p.m. till late. Friday is my day off from exercise as I'm at work all day from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. on my feet for most of the day, but there's not a lot of moving around. So it works as a recovery day. And then again, Saturday is low intensity. I'm at work all day and in the evening, I'm on Zwift racing. So in 10 weeks from now, I will add in another 10 mile run to Wednesday and I'll reduce my recovery days down from three to two in the week and increase my calorie intake up to 2,500 calories every day. But I will tweak it. Um, if some days it's a nice day, I might go out and do a run instead of go to the gym. And then just a reminder that I'm not a nutritionist. I started this video by saying that I have no idea what I'm doing and I don't really. I make these videos as a way of sharing what it is that I'm doing. That's it. I know what works for me, so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna to stick to this for 10 weeks as anything less and I wouldn't have given it all the chance to work. If this video is received well or even vaguely interesting to you, then I'll make another one about my progress in about 10 weeks when I make the changes. And as Sally McRae said in a recent video of hers I watched, the proving yourself right yourself is the best right. feeling ever. Is the best feeling ever. My, my training doesn't have to look like else anyone else's. And the, great, and the greatest the joy is being able to on experiment myself. on myself really and see what I'm capable of doing. Oh my gosh, this is it. I have big things planned for the end of this year and the start of next year. Please subscribe and follow along. See you in the next video. Don't let them know what you're against or what you're for.